Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'll be discussing my best photography investments to date, which is year 2020, excluding that of my camera purchases, my lenses and my lights. Now, I also made a video prior to this one discussing my worst photography investments. And if you guys want to see that, I will leave a link below for you guys to watch it. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so first, my spider holster. If you guys aren't familiar with this, I'm sure you could just search it, it's spider holster. But I love this one for the fact of convenience and this is, a, this is the one that was built for the mirrorless system which I'm using now. And the special thing about that, it comes with a plate that has an Arca Swiss mount, so it's very easy for me to put it on my tripod. So I really can't shoot without this. This is an essential thing for me. Well worth the money I paid for this. I think this, this set is about $200 if I'm not mistaken, but worth every, every thing that I paid for for that one, okay. Next, I'm not really a strap guy. That's why I love my spider holster so much. The reason why I don't like straps is because I don't like it hanging on my head or when I'm walking, it's swaying. And secondly, when I put my camera down, that strap becomes, a ha uh, it becomes hazardous or it's more dangerous. And there's a tendency for your camera to just fall off the table if somebody hits it or, or snags a strap. So whenever I travel, I don't even bring a strap, but I do have my Peak Design, the Peak Design clip. This one is very similar to my Workhorse Spider holster, but the nice thing about the, the, the Peak Design is that I can put it anywhere. Meaning, I can mount this on my belt, I can mount it on my, on the bag that I'm taking for travel, or when I'm with the kids, I can put it on the baby bag or the stroller. And it's got the same Arca Swiss mount. All I have to do is replace the, the plate of the spider holster with this one, and it works basically the same way. So another one that's well worth the money. I don't use it as often as I should because I haven't been traveling that much too but I always make sure to have it whenever I do travel. So this one will stay with me for a long time. Next, uh, let me see. Okay, this one. What are these? Cheap white balance card. And a white balance, oops, sorry, a white balance filter. This two basically do the same thing. And it's not, it's relatively inexpensive, but it saved me so much headaches already. So how do I use this? Why is it so important to me? Whenever I am shooting a wedding and we are in a situation in which the light doesn't change, let's say hotel rooms or the church or basically, well, any place that has continuous constant light, I would always make sure that all our cameras are properly white balanced or the white balance of every camera is properly set. Now, the reason why I do that so that all the images are consistent all throughout. You're asking, you're gonna say, well, I shoot in RAW, so it shouldn't be a problem. It will be a problem, trust me. If you are shooting 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 images that you all have to color correct at the same time. Now, when I am shooting, when I've set my white balance also, I might not, this, this one might not give me the perfect white balance or it will give me the perfect white balance but not the white balance that I am looking for. The best thing about that is that all my images will be shot with the same white balance. So if I do one general correction to one, I can just apply it to everything and everything will still remain consistent. Very, very cheap and a must-have and when you're shooting in studio lighting this is also a must-have all right next oh all right before we get into that maybe i discussed in before we get into the travel stuff okay here a sturdy and tall light stand this may be expensive, but this has lasted me so long. This is the Manfrotto 104 BAC. This is a 13 foot light stand 
capable of handling all my big lights. Even if we're outdoor, I can put in my big modifiers. If it's windy, my assistant can hold. I don't, I am not afraid that this thing would break. The nice thing about this one also, if you notice the design is that it's flat, so it's very easy for you to stack it. It's also got attachments here that you could put a, a strap so you could carry it behind your back. But a good light stand is always something that you should be investing on. This has lasted me a few years. If you see, there's so many scratches and dings around it, but it's still alive and it's still working properly. I've destroyed a few light stands already and you know, this is, this is well worth the money that you're paying for. All right, so now let's go to my flash gear. I said I won't be talking about my lights, but I will be talking of, of some investments that I did for my travel flash. I, I would call it my travel light system. So whenever I do travel with my family or my friends, it's, it's a must that I always bring my flash with me. And that's just, that's just in my DNA. I always want to have at least a flash with me. And I don't want to travel with so much gear anymore. So these are the things that I bring around. This was such a good investment. This is the MagMod starter kit. It comes with the MagSphere, a grid, the mag grip and well it's not here but also a mag gel so this is so small it'll fit anywhere and it just gives you beautiful soft light whenever you're using your speed lights oh so again that's a premise that when i whenever i do travel i don't normally bring my big lights i i tend to bring my sony f f45 or f60 rm and uh, this is the one that's normally connected to it Coupled with this one, I would also recommend this. This is the mag grip. So you install your flash here. Very, very important because um, I've broken so many hot shoe flashes with just cold shoes because they would normally give way and, and drop to the floor. This has been the sturdiest cold shoe that I've ever used. Plus, it's very easy for us to adjust the position of the light because it's pistol grip. All I have to do is press this and I can tilt it up and down already. Very, very good investment. I think I'll have this until, well, if I do a video 2025, most likely most of this equipment will still be with me. Well worth the investment. Next, again, so I am a flash photographer. These things, my batteries, my any loops, you know, these things have been with me since 2009 and they're still okay. I, I just love them. I, I love these any loops because they hold their charge so I don't have to constantly charge them. So there's some that I think I left in a case for a year that I haven't been able to use because the, the staff has a tendency to just recharge what they use. So these are some of the spare ones. And this think tank battery holders are fantastic. So this is how I do it. If I've already used up the battery, all I would do is flip it like that so I know it needs to be charged. Very, very nice and handy. This battery, this case holds about eight batteries. So that's two flash units to, that you can power. So my any loops and this think tank battery pouch, fantastic. So now that we're in the topic of batteries, let's talk about the charger. This was well worth it. I bought this about easily about the same time I bought these batteries, which is probably 10 years old now. This is the Maha fast charger, charges eight at a time. So for every pack like this, it just charges, takes less than an hour. Fantastic, fantastic purchase. Well worth it, really well worth it. Then I have my travel light stand. So I have my big light stand. This is really for work. This one for my hefty lights, like my Photix Indra or my Pro Photos. But whenever I want to travel light, I take around this one. This is the Photix Padat 200 Carbon. So it's carbon fiber, so it's very, very light. If you notice, it's also very small. It's about maybe about a foot and a half. So I install this one here and then I can just take this around anywhere I am going without having to break my back or if I'm shooting without an assistant, it's very, very easy for me to carry. The nice thing about this Photix Padat also is this one feature, or actually there are two features in this Photix Padat that I really love. Wait, let's open it up. I will show you here. 
there's another adjustment so that whenever you're shooting on stairs or uneven surfaces, you can adjust this one and it will adjust by itself. So it's very, it's easier for you to put your light in situations that normally a normal light stand will not stand. And secondly, you could take out the center column. Sorry, it's a bit noisy. You could take out the center column and it becomes just a normal stick. So instead of having this, uh, instead of using this one, if you have an assistant, it's easier for them for to just hold this and then put the light wherever it is that you want them to put it. Because sometimes light stands are not allowed in public places. But if you just have this, it's okay. So long as you don't put this one down, you're gonna be fine in public places. All right, there. Plus, a good advantage of this one is that it will fit in your luggage. Um, you notice when you're, whenever you're bringing light stands, especially if you're flying, it's very difficult because you have to check it in separately in a different bag. This one will fit inside your luggage. So lastly, when it comes to travel, I also have the best tripod that I've ever purchased for travel. This is my Gitso. 1541 with the RRS travel ball head. This small light stand has been with me everywhere I go whenever I have to fly and travel and I need to travel light. Because if I don't need to travel light, then I would bring my bigger Manfrotto tripods, the heavier one, the sturdier ones. Um, because of course, a sturdier tripod will always be better, but this one is good enough. So it's carbon fiber, so it's light. Pretty tall, it, it has four legs, uh, four, at, sorry, four telescopic legs to make it tall enough. And the RRS ball head for me was such a very good investment because every time I put my camera here, I'm not worried that it's just gonna fall off or uh, something might happen to it. And the nice thing about this small tripod, they may be light, but it also has an, adjust, an attachment here where you could put your camera bag if ever, or maybe if I'm traveling with my wife, my wife's bag will be on this, just to give it more weight. But of course, make sure when you do that, you do it in a safe place, because there's sometimes uh, it's, it's um, you always have to err on the side of caution whenever you're traveling with a tripod and leaving your camera there, because somebody could just snatch it and take away your prized possession, especially if I put my wife's bag here, right? So yeah, and again, this one, by itself will fit inside my luggage. So I don't need a separate bag for my tripod or my light stand. I can just put it inside my luggage because I can do this. This actually came with a smaller ball head, but I replaced it with the RRS because I like the feel of the RRS ball head better. So there, my Gitso travel tripod. Now, these next items are basically um, stuff that I invested in for photography that I believe everyone should invest on too. Okay, so buy original software. Honestly guys, it's, it's not that expensive. It's a very, very good investment because they constantly update their software with newer and better things. So just buy the software, don't do bootleg copies, okay? Next, um, since we're in the topic of software, it's also essential that you buy a good computer for your photos. Now, I didn't want to make it a part of this, of this um, video because I constantly upgrade my computer, so I don't know if it's a good or bad investment, but I always tend to invest in good hardware to support the files coming in from my, from my computer because for us, time is money, so the faster the computer, the better it is. Though, there are a few things that I purchased for, for that computer that I believe is a very, very good investment that you guys might want to invest on. Those people using Macs, you hate their mouse, correct? It's, well, it's uncomfortable, but you love it because of all the features that comes to the Magic Mouse. And I found this thing online. The, the reason why the mouse is so uncomfortable is because of the design and the side. So I found this, it's by Elevation Lab it basically straightens out your Magic Mouse and gives you a better grip. So it's very nice to the hand and it maintains all the beautiful features of this Magic Mouse, okay, here. Last but not the least is this one. This is uh, the SanDisk 
one terabyte SSD that is shockproof and waterproof. Best way to store your files, especially when you're traveling. Whenever I'm traveling, I always make sure that the moment I back it up in my computer, I also back it up in, in an external hard drive and I don't erase my SD cards. And that's the same thing we do when, when it comes to weddings. So I have a few of these. These are, I have one as my work drive, then one would be a traveling drive, but a very, very good investment, a fast and reliable hard drive. Okay, so I guess that's it. So hard drive, the MagMod MagShoe, my AnyLoop batteries with my Think Tank case, my Elevation Lab attachment for my Magic Mouse. I know it's such a simple thing. I think it's $10, but all those people using this Magic Mouse, trust me, you guys are gonna love it when you put that. My Maha fast charger for my AnyLoop batteries, my rechargeable batteries, my MagMod starter kit, my Photix Padat rod of uh, my Photix Padat carbon 200 tripod uh, light stand. My Gitso tripod with an RRS head. Of course, my spider holster. My peak design clip. White card. And my Manfrotto light stand. All right, so that's it. So guys, I would love to hear your thoughts about the matter. Feel free to leave a comment below if you think that I missed out on anything that might be a worthwhile investment in terms of our photography gear. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, you could subscribe to the channel and once you've subscribed to the channel, you could also click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you wanna see some of the images that I've created, feel free to follow me on Instagram it's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.